Hello again, true believers. This is Charles Mangan. Uh, welcome back to another exciting episode. Um, sorry, did I say exciting? Another episode of the How To Podcast. Uh, today I'm going to be revisiting the keyboard that I took apart a little bit last, um, well, it's been a couple of months ago now. And this is, as before, my sort of experimental slash sacrifice keyboard. As you can see, it's missing a few keys, and I've done some uh, repairs and replacements on it. And today we're going to be taking a look at this key switch here, replacing the post on that, as well as taking a look at how to test and hopefully repair or refurbish uh, bad key switches. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. So just as before, I've got my soldering iron solder sucker combo here. I'm just going to take the, uh, the solder off these two points and then should be able to remove the switch. tip that I think someone sent in since last time was to try and use a pair of uh, chip pullers to get the uh, two sides of the switch pressed in at the same time so you don't have to get in there with a knife or uh, various bits of sharp metal and risk damaging the other keys. So squeeze like so and pops right out. And as a bit of a bonus, I'm going to be working on a key switch from this type of keyboard. And you might recognize these switches if you have a 2 plus uh, or maybe an earlier 2E versus the round type switches that I, I had in my other keyboard. Uh, this one actually came from the keyboard for a Mac Plus, but uh, the switches themselves are the same. And again, the process is the same. Melt the solder, free the pins, and pull the switch out. Again, the chip puller or tweezers, something similar, makes this a much easier operation. There we go. Now, at this point, you can put away the soldering iron, but you may want to get out your multimeter. Since these are basically just a simple switch, the best way to test them is to test for continuity. When it's open and closed, you get an open circuit and a closed circuit. All right, so I've got my leads hooked up to some clips and meter set to continuity. So when I get a good connection, you should hear a beep. So if this is a good switch, it'll beep. If you've got a switch on your keyboard that isn't working or isn't consistent, when you do this test, it won't beep. It'll just do, it'll just click. Um, or it might do something where it, it kind of beeps. So you won't get a good consistent connection with a bad switch. This one's pretty good, but I'll continue to use it as an example. This one, aside from being uh, having a stem that's broken here, is also, I believe, a good switch. It's in good shape. But again, use it as an example. Just imagine that the contacts are bad. The way to get inside this little black box is to find the two parts that are holding it together. And with the flat edge of either a spudger or an X-Acto knife or something similar, pop these two clips on the sides, just slightly open. Don't have to break anything, just very gently pop that 
a little open, and that side a little open. And then you can work the two halves of the switch casing apart. And depending on how grody these things are, there may be some uh, stuff in there that does not want to let go. So if you look really closely, it's going to be difficult to see because this is black plastic on video, but there are two little latches on either side of the thin part of this big latch here. And this is the latch that holds it into the body of the keyboard itself. These two little latches are what holds the switch body together. So if you can work this just a little bit open, maybe even work your blade down to these little switches here, again very gently trying not to break this plastic piece, because while I've managed to recreate some of these uh, plastic bits in uh, 3D printed plastic, I haven't got this casing quite yet. So once you've got one side loose, just hold it there and then do the same, same thing with the other side. There we go. So now this is open. Uh, don't just go popping it apart because some of these things are under tension and they actually have springs inside of them. And as soon as you pop it apart, you are going to lose the spring. It's simply one of the laws of physics. It goes right along with Murphy's Law. And as you pull this off, see there's the spring. Uh, hold on to that. So there are two very thin pieces of metal. This one with the three prongs. And this one that is sort of a C shape, and that actually goes to one side of the switch contact and the other. So if you've never taken one of these apart, now you can see how the switch actually works. When these two pieces make contact, that means these two posts are continuous and that makes the circuit. And they're held just barely apart by the design of this plastic piece here and the slots in the top part of the housing. When the key switch is in the up position, it presses this away from the other contact. And as it pushes down, it allows the two contacts to touch. This outer piece here is held in tension against the inner piece, makes contact. And then when the switch post is actually introduced, it makes contact when the post is down. And then when the post is up, it pushes the two ends apart. So that holds it open. And when you press down, it makes contact and closes. So open, up, down, closed. So if those two pieces aren't making a good contact, it could be a number of things. It could be some corrosion in here. It could be that one of the pieces is bent or corroded to the point where it's not holding its shape anymore.
You'll notice on both of these connectors, there is a gold contact side and a non-gold non-contact side. So the parts that make contact should be gold. And if they're corroded or covered with gunk, this would be a good time to address that with some isopropyl alcohol and some contact cleaner. So if the contacts are not making contact, let's hit just a tiny little bit of isopropyl alcohol on this one, even though it doesn't need it. Give you an idea of how to do that. And make a giant mess with isopropyl. Just a quick dab there. Make sure to get all the gunk off if there is any. And the C-shaped piece here, the contact side should face outward and it goes to the inside slot with its solder post there sticking out. And then we've got this uh, sort of Starship Enterprise shaped piece boldly going where key switches have gone before. Again, it has a little tiny gold contact there on the very end. Make sure that gets good and clean. And there's no uh, broken pieces here. So when it's in proper form, it should sort of lift up. Goes in the other slot and to know you've got it in the proper orientation, the, the two posts, the two solder posts should end up on opposite sides. So this post being broken is trash. But of course I have a replacement. Orient the post in the switch. It should only go one way, but the idea is that the, again, the rounded side goes toward the side of the housing with the two slots in it, because that's where the switch will actually operate. Make sure that it slides okay up and down in that uh, groove there. And you'll feel that kind of press the two contacts away from each other as you pull the switch post down into place. So you get your spring back in place. Don't let it go flying. So reassembly is just the opposite of before. We align the holes in the base with the two solder posts and press it together. Make sure the spring stays in there in its little housing and it all snaps together. So now I've replaced the post and just as proof of life, it's all good. So that's ready to pop back into the keyboard and solder back together. So next we'll address this other style of key post. The key switch has a uh, T-shaped post instead of round, but it's much the same kind of construction where we just need to pull a couple of tabs apart at the same time and the whole switch will come apart. On this one, however, they don't give you quite as easy access to those tabs. So you see the gray shape bottom piece is sort of mated with the black top piece. And you'll see these sort of T-shaped sides. Those are the parts we need to pry again very gently apart. Just a little bit of pressure pops them open and you should be able to start to pry the case apart. So 
So they do give you a couple of handy access holes right here at the top with their tiny, and you do need the very tip of a sharp blade to get behind there. Sure, there's some specialized tool for Apple hardware techs to pop these open with, but I just use an X-Acto and a little bit of pressure. I'll try not to slice my fingers open. And as Dave from the EEV blog says, Ta-da! We're in like Flynn. So we slide the two pieces open. Again, carefully making sure that you don't lose the spring as it goes flying out. So the body of this post obviously looks different on the inside from the other post, but it works on a lot of the same principle. See, this time the switch itself is a little bit more of a package, but operation is much the same. So you can see how this would normally work. You've got the two posts there separated again by that thin metal sheet. And when enough pressure comes down and pushes on this sort of Y-shaped metal clip, it presses the two contacts together. And if the problem with your switch is that this clip on top is not making proper contact, you may be able to give it a little bit more of a push by bending the ends of the Y slightly more upward so that as the post comes down, it puts a little bit more pressure on that point. I'll go ahead and take this one apart so you can see it, but I wouldn't recommend taking one of these apart unless you have a replacement handy because it's nigh impossible to put it back together again once you pop these two little plastic welds here on the corner. There's an upper piece here that's connected to this solder point. And it's held in place by a little plastic rivet there. You'll see that underneath it is a very thin, a very thin piece of clear plastic that is holding the top contact apart from the bottom contact. And so when the switch comes down, it actually push, pushes on this third metal piece with this little bump in the middle there. The switch slides down. It's two little arms of this Y-shaped piece push down the tiny metal nubbin in between them, pressing top contact down into the bottom contact, closing the gap created by this tiny sheet of plastic. So you can see why I would recommend not bothering taking one of these guys apart because even if you were to get in there and clean out any gunk, clean out the contacts, be hard pressed to get it back together again with the same tolerance as it had originally. Certainly worth a try for someone that has 
both the patient's and the eyesight, but I have neither of those. So I have done the disassembly for you. Hopefully you can see how that should work. So to reassembly. The post goes in first, and it should only fit in one direction. And it goes into one of the two slots in the housing. This switch assembly all clipped together goes into the other slot in the housing. So the actual assembly goes on about like so. With this clip going on the back part against the plastic. And that whole assembly goes together into the other slot with this plastic part of the switch and the spring toward the middle, toward where the post is, into this other slot. And in it goes. And then the spring in there. And then finally, this will only go on properly in one direction, two holes in the base for the solder points. So that's the, that's the orientation that it needs to go in. snap back together again. And let's see if I did that correctly. So open, closed, open, closed. So now we've got two different kinds of switches that can go back into your Apple II keyboard or in this case, uh, an early Mac keyboard. All you need to do is put those through the holes in the circuit board and solder them back on. Make sure you test first and uh, good to go. And if you have any questions or anything you'd like me to cover on how to, please contact me through my website at retroconnector.com.